This conference will now be recorded. Uh, hello, and thank you. Thank you for to anyone who's tuning in today. We've certainly had our fair share of technical problems. I uh, seem to, with each presentation, find a, a new way to um, to do something wrong. Uh, I'm going to record this one with the hope that anyone who's suffered through some of the other problem presentations might have most of the information easily at hand. Um, the autoclave is sitting beside me. I have the uh, door open uh, simply because you can't open it if the power is out. And in an earlier presentation, we had a power issue and things all went wrong. Um, but I want to basically explain why the autoclave works very well for some people, might not be perfect for your setting, and how you might determine if it works for you. Um, the two things that just jump right uh, out at you are the speed of the autoclave, uh, the size of the autoclave being easy to carry and manage, and the price point being attractive. Uh, it sells for less than $4,000 Canadian, including shipping. And it comes with a USB port. It, uh, so all sorts of reports can be, um, can be generated, all your cycle histories, etc. cetera. Uh, now, it's a Class B uh, sterilizer, and most Class B sterilizers, <clears throat> excuse me, are generally very expensive. And a Class B sterilizer typically runs between um, <clears throat> eight and twelve thousand dollars. And um, the only exception to this I'm aware of was the Tinga, which was a Chinese-made um, autoclave and really didn't have the support network needed to be a, a reliable uh, alternative. <clears throat> Excuse me, the dry winter air. Um, this uh, autoclave, because it's smaller, it's easier to transport. One of the nice things is that dealers can have um, extra units on stock. Uh, that allows us to give the customer a, um, a unit that they can use if their autoclave requires uh, service. Um, the, the autoclave uh, weighs about 33 pounds. You're talking 35 pounds. Shipping weight uh, comes beautifully packaged all the, around and the box isn't all that big that you can store it and, and you have it if, if service is ever required. So the advantages of a Class B autoclave are that the existence of a, a vacuum early and late in the process make both the sterilization and the drying, especially make the drying cycle very, very fast. I've run several dozen um, cycles now with this autoclave and the first cycle of the day seems to sit around 15 minutes and i found as i did more it was down near 12 or 13. that's with the drying included when you're just sterilizing it's fast it's it's quicker uh, uh, again uh, something in the range of seven minutes the actual sterilization time is is is, is roughly four minutes at a temperature of 134 Celsius. And it is super, super easy to move, uh, to, to use. Basically, when you turn it on, and I'm gonna move this around right now, hopefully not hitting anything, because I wanna show you all the cool features. Um, and oddly enough, they're actually on the back. You, obviously your power cord, but your on and off switch is right there. Your USB stick that records everything is right there. The USB stick also has an installation video. Um, and it also has a copy of the manual, 
copy of the warranty and it keeps all your cycle reports so just a tremendous oh and the software that you need to read the cycle reports and i'll show you uh, one of them pretty soon this round thing is the, is the hepa filter so very small simple very clever technology you need to be a little bit careful that when you screw it in because it, it has a thread you get it aligned so that you don't cross thread it and then you've got two tubes and i'm just going to hold up hold up uh, the heavy one first this is your distilled water and then once you've used up a bottle you grab one of these and this is is the this is sort of what ex, is exhausted so when you're running cycle after cycle you're not uh, constantly filling the machine or checking the machine you're basically just uh, uh, pressing that button and so when it turns on when you hit that on uh, switch what you'll see in the front screen it, it'll say hello and then you hit hello and you have three choices one are uh, test cycles uh, the, uh, the second one is your your um, uh, your autoclave cycles one without pouches one for glassware and certain scopes which is a longer cycle at lower temperatures and the one you're going to use most of the time uh, is your regular pouched one on the third so as long as it's selected it usually re remembers where you were the last time so it just goes directly that so you go hello and then you go start and away you go and then just come back uh, uh, 15 minutes or less later and it'll say door is open and you unload it now i noticed the first time i i reached in and, and i i had common sense enough to uh to be careful and wear some gloves um, it actually wasn't all that hot after even 60 seconds it was very easy to take them out uh, right instantly they were warm not so warm that i would burn myself but you wanted to be careful and the pouches were dry now um so compare this to the value clave which a lot of you know we sell a lot and it's from now and you can see the, the easy uh the old easy ten on behind us what are the differences um well the value clay super super simple almost nothing to go wrong but no printer you can't add a printer uh takes about an hour to run and to dry but very very dependable just goes on for forever um but it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. But in terms of um, numbers of pouches, how would they compare? Well, the value clay um, holds about six pouches. Uh, three trays, each tray would hold two pouches. The bigger autoclaves behind would hold a lot more. This, this is very, it's a very awkward thing to talk about number of pouches because what does the manufacturer say? Well, they say eight, eight pouches. Well, it isn't eight pouches. That's eight pouches if you're a dentist and you've got little, little tiny things. For foot care, the suggestion is 1.1 pounds. So that is roughly um, three sets of instruments. So it would, um, when i did some some experiments i put one of these sets in one of these sets i put a burr and really had no trouble at all now this brings us to an issue that's often misunderstood and and, and even an hour ago i had a long discussion with the customer about this um there is a misunderstanding that pouches should never overlap and that simply isn't true. Um, the technology or the physics of steam, they go through these pouches. And, and I wanted to show you something here. This is a, uh, a process control device. So you put the whole box in the autoclave 
And it's a very sophisticated way of testing your autoclave. And you can, whoops, there you go. You can see the biological uh, vial right in the middle, as is the class five integrator. And you put these sandwiched in there, in the box, and you put the whole thing in the autoclave and run it. And the idea is if, um, if the steam penetrates deep inside there and kills everything in the, in the class five integrator changes color, everything is good. And, and logically it is, but that, that demonstrates the way, uh, steam penetrates. And the same thing is true of a Bowie Dick test. And I'm going to mention that because Bowie Tick tests are suggested for class B autoclaves. They don't test whether the product sterilized. They test whether the vacuum is working. And again, sandwiched in all those cards is one of these. And if the autoclave vacuum is adequate, uh, this color is very even. And you can see it is. And this was sandwiched in there. And again, the everything uh, penetrated to test that. This is what they look like uh, that you actually put in the autoclave. Now this autoclave has a neat feature in that it has its own built-in test. So it has a cycle that you can just press and it'll test the vacuum itself or another bu button uh, for that you, and you put your Bowie Dick test in. Um, I, my feeling would be that if you are happy, your inspector's happy, you can save yourself a lot of money with just doing the autoclave test itself. It's very, very precise, but uh, inspectors are inspectors and uh, foot care people don't get the same answers all the time. Um, in fact, you're kind of ha ha happy when you get the same answer two times in a row. So you're going to, you're going to load the instruments and I'm going to take the tray out that loads them in. There we go. So you don't have to take the tray out. You would load the, the, the tray in the autoclave, but you can see what you're going to do is you're going to put your instruments in. Um, you're going to arrange them a little bit so that you don't end up with a great big mess of stainless steel right in the middle or on top of each other, but spreading them out. But basically that's it. Uh, as I said, you would load the, uh, the tray while it's in place. Uh, the tray butts up against the seal in here. Um, and one of the nice things is cleaning doesn't require any special cycles. It doesn't require any special products. You just have to be very careful that your cleaning product uh, doesn't react with aluminum. It doesn't have chlorine in it. So you're going to avoid some of those really harsh bathroom cleaners, etc. You're going to stick with something that's, you know, simple and, and safe. Um, uh, there, there's some different options that way. And you're just going to wipe down that tray. You're going to wipe down the, the seal. And uh, and every once in a blue moon, you'll wipe down the outside of the, uh, of the autoclave. Get yourself a, a, a group of those micro, micro towels. You can find them in grocery stores, car dealerships, and stuff like that. Uh, something that's fine and lint-free. The last thing you need is is lint in here. Um, now, uh, just to, uh, to read the manufacturer's instructions, it says it's recommended to clean the seal after every um, hundred, hundred cycles um, and the internal part about once a week. I'm giving this from my office so the phone does ring every once in a while. Um, the autoclave itself is portable. And, and so there's going to be two or three things that come to mind. Um, well, could I, as a foot care person, could I autoclave as I'm going along? Could I, 
because if the cycle's completing in 15 minutes and my average treatment time is 20, could I be, in a sense, staying ahead of the game? And the answer is yes and no. Um, it is portable. You could go to, to off-site to use it. It doesn't require any special electrical. And you just take those bottles of water, clumsy, but it can be done. Um, there's two things to remember. First of all, always take a surge protector because it's expensive, it's electrical. And just like you'd always have a surge protector on, on your computer at home or in your office, you need a surge protector on anything you have an expensive computer board on. Second thing is the holdup is probably not going to be the sterilization. This will keep up with it. And in fact, if the patient's right there, you don't need to pouch it. So you're, you're only looking at seven, eight minutes and you're ready to go. As soon as the instruments cool down, good to go. The problem is you still have to clean the instruments and cleaning them off site isn't an easy thing. You're, you're wanting to wear gloves and protect yourself while you're doing the cleaning using somewhat strong cleaning agents. So you don't want that around your patient. So that's the, that's the hold up. But if you had a scenario like you were going to another city, you were seeing 40 or 50 patients, you only had 30 sets of instruments, and you're doing it over a couple of days, you could easily uh, do the cleaning at, at night and then be autoclaving during the sessions that day. Just clean them all, pouch them, and then as you're, you're doing foot care, you could be doing several sets and you'd be actually catching up because you'd be autoclaving faster than, than you're using them. And that brings up the question, how close could this be while you're doing your uh, foot care? And the answer is very close. It's much quieter than a drill. Um, very, very quiet. It's quieter than any other autoclaves we sell by a long shot. Um, and if I ran the cycle here, which I tried to in the first video and it just ran into lots of troubles. Um, but if you, uh, ran, if I was running it, I wouldn't have to speak any louder. It, you'll hear an occasional whoosh or goosh or a little, little sound of a fan because with vacuums, you've got to expel the extra pressure. But all in all, it's an extremely quiet, um, quiet product that would be much quieter than any sort of a podiatry drill with a vacuum. Um, documentation. So um, I compared it to the value clave. And the other autoclave that might be worth comparing it to is the M9D from Midmarker Ritter. It, like the value clave, is a manual autoclave, so the door opens. This one, of course, the door doesn't open. It's got the HEPA filter, which is a great feature. Um, but like the value clave, the M9D, the door opens, and you can attach a printer to the M9D, which you cannot to the value clave, or even you can, you can also attack, attach a USB stick. And um, uh, but the price point of an M9D plus a printer or the USB data logger is probably eight hundred dollars more than this. The the chamber size is much bigger, but you're looking at an hour, so. You, you start to see the, 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 the things. And one of the nice things, again, about this autoclave is if you're not in Toronto or Kitchener or London and you're in Tebbins or Thunder Bay or, you know, uh, uh, Prince Edward Island, it gives you a, an option of shipping at a relatively inexpensive cost to get it serviced. Um, and so that's a nice feature if that should happen. Um, okay. So a documentation. I am going to, if you'll excuse me a second, I'm just going to uh, open up the document.
Bear with me for a second. So th this is the, the, the printout of a cycle. This is a cycle that I ran on this unit. And it sort of felt, I, I'm not sure if you're seeing the whole printout or not. So I'm, I'm going to show you the top of it and then the bottom of it. You can, at the, the top, you can see both the, the pressure and the sterilization. And right in the middle is your, your sterilization time. And, and, uh, and I'm just going to pull back for a second, pull this up. Not sure how that looked on your end. And this is the bottom of the page. And you're seeing uh, the pressure that was reached, the sterilization temperature. It's showing you the different um, uh, steps. And actually, this cycle took 14 minutes and eight seconds. Um, so, and as, as I said, you're going to record all of these cycles, that nice report with absolutely everything you could possibly imagine on the report. You're going to store it on a USB stick, which you can download to your computer. And the USB stick comes with the software so that you can display this and it has other features. So if you're really curious about all of this, lots and lots of questions you, you can ask. Now, I'm going to uh, close that for a second. Come back on, on it once more. So um, one of the questions that comes up and it's because we sell single use and a lot of suppliers do. Well, let's talk about that for a second. So a single use set like this, this is four pieces. It's got the scalpel handle. Uh, this one sells for a little bit under $12. Uh, some of the ones with fewer instruments sell $10, $11 and that kind of thing. How does that compare to something like this? Well, let's say you're seeing three patients a day um you're going to spend thirty dollars what's your leasing costs on this per day well it's about 130 to 150 dollars a month depending on the lease structure i've seen some leases that literally have a buyout of one or buyout of ten dollars at the end of the lease so after three years you own it and you're looking, as I said, about $130, $140 a month. Divide that by 20 um, working days in the month, and you can see that your cost to run the autoclave is less, leasing cost is less than $10 per, per day, per working day. Um, of course, you've got the cost of your pouches, not very expensive distilled water, not very expensive, biological tests, expensive, but still two to five dollars a day, depending on what system you're using. And only you only use them the days you actually autoclave. Uh, I got my little my little uh, tester here. So that's what I mean by biological testers. You've got this. Um, uh, startup costs for that whole thing is about $260 incubator uh, record keeping book uh, record keeping book and all of that kind of stuff and the cleaning products that you use on it again are very very inexpensive so it could in theory be be something that if you're finding single-use instruments have some downsides for you the constant cost perhaps you're not getting a nail cutter that feels good to your hand uh, etc it gives you an option which over a period of a year shouldn't really be that um, um, it, it shouldn't be any more expensive 
it, it, it really is is the uh, uh, the startup cost of the um, of of the of the uh, of signing the lease, but it, you know, but usually they want them a, a month or two up front, something like that. But once you're you're set up as an ongoing cost. Now with leases, it's it's important to understand that you're still responsible for the maintenance of the machine, of any service work, and, and that kind of thing. But that that is is it in a nutshell. And as I said. I don't think it's perfect for everybody. I think if you're a clinic doing 50 patients a day, yeah, it's, you know, it's not going to work. It could be an absolutely wonderful backup because, uh, you know, if you had some dirty instruments and you wanted to use that special instrument on this special patient, you can literally sterilize it in, in seven or eight minutes and be ready to go. Uh, I think that's it, and um, I thank you for your patience and look forward to any questions, and do feel free, free to call us or email us at Quality Foot Care.